Let's first talk about the classical knock gate. The knock gate switches bits, turning a 0 into a 1 and a 1 into a 0. Can an analogous quantum knock gate for qubits be defined? Merely switching the zero state to one and vice versa doesn't really tell us what happens to the superposition of the two. The quantum knock gate actually switches the locations of zero and one in the state vector. This linear behavior actually prevents paradoxes like time travel and violating the second law of thermodynamics. The QNOT transformation for a two qubit system can be represented by the following two by two matrix. Using matrix vector notation to represent the state vector, we can easily verify that applying this 2x2 matrix on the state vector switches the locations of alpha and beta, performing the q naught transformation. This raises the question of whether any 2x2 matrix can represent a quantum gate. Recall the normalization condition where the coefficients in front of 0 and 1 squared must equal 1. The resultant transformed state vector with its new coefficients must also satisfy this condition. Turns out that matrices that are unitary preserve this condition when implemented as a transformation. Unitary matrices are matrices that when multiplied by their complex transpose give the identity matrix. This unitary constraint is actually the only constraint on a quantum gate. Two important gates are known as the Z and the Hadamard gate. The Z gate just flips the sign in front of one, but the Hadamard gate is actually much more interesting. It produces the following post-transformation states when initialized with zero or one. To understand how this transformation works, let's go back to the Bloch sphere. If we place an arbitrary state vector on the sphere, we can understand the Hadamard gate as first rotating by the y-axis by 90 degrees. This can then be followed by a 180 degree rotation about the x-axis. There are an infinite number of 2x2 unitary matrices, and thus an infinite number of single qubit gates. However, it turns out that every unitary matrix can be defined as the product of the following 2x2 matrices. The rightmost matrix is just the standard rotation matrix. We will see soon that the left matrix can be understood as just a rotation about the z-axis. This means that every unitary matrix can actually just be represented as a rotation about the Bloch sphere. Now let us generalize to multiple qubits. If you decompose all multiple classical bit logic gates, you can actually see that any function on bits can be defined solely using the NAND gate, which is thus known as the universal gate. By contrast, even ZOR along with NOT is not universal. The prototypical quantum logic gate is the controlled NOT, or CNOT gate. This gate has two inputs, known as the control and the target qubit. As shown by the circuit diagram, the top line represents the control qubit, while the bottom represents the target qubit. If the control qubit is set to 0, the target is left unchanged. If the control is set to 1, the target qubit is flipped. If we define this quantum gate with a matrix, looking at each column of UCN, you can see that the first describes the transformation that occurs to 0, 0, the second column for 0, 1, and so on. But now you're probably wondering if other classical gates like NAND or ZOR can be represented as a unitary gate similar to how NOT represents CNOT. Turns out that this isn't actually possible. A cool property of unitary matrices is that their inverse is always also unitary. This means that all quantum gates are reversible, and that if you know the output of a gate, you can also know which inputs it came from. However, gates like NAND or ZOR 
only flow in one direction. C0 is actually a special gate because all multiple qubit logic gates can be composed of purely C0 and single qubit gates. In this sense, it's the quantum parallel of the universality of NAND.